Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of looking at our most recent reveals, thanks to Bushiroad's recent stream this past Tuesday. So we're going to be going over the new Keter Sanctuary, aka Royal Paladin support for Majesty Lord Blaster, as well as the new support for the Brant Gate Glitter card, Ava, as well as the Dual Nation support card that goes with her deck as well, which is a combination of Brant and Keter Sanctuary. So we'll kind of go over what this really means for both of the nations and if it's really a dual nation support or if it's just really like a specific glitter card support like the rest kind of seem to be but we're gonna just go right into talking about the new Keter Sanctuary stuff which is Majesty Lord Blaster and the rest of the Royal Paladins. So Majesty Lord Blaster's skill is continuous if your soul has Blaster Blade and Blaster Dark. This gets another 2000 power and an extra critical so that's during your opponent's turn as well and it has that in little parentheses as well just in case you weren't aware what continuous meant. The next skill is when this unit attacks the vanguard you perform all of the abilities and it says you choose to perform only one which can be a little bit confusing since it says perform all the following but you can choose to perform only one. So anyways, let's just go right into the skills. It says cost, put a blaster blade from your rear into the soul. You choose one of your opponent's rear guards and you retire it. The other skill is put a blaster dart from your rear into your soul. And this unit gets an extra drive check until the end of the turn. So the fact that you can only choose one means it's not like the classic MLB where you just shove both blaster blade and blaster dark into the soul. But because you're gonna be having blaster blade or possibly blaster dark in your ride line, it's very easy just to have the other on the board, shove it to soul, and then you'll get the 2k and the extra crit regardless. Shoving the blaster dark into the soul seems to be the best of the two options since getting an extra drive check in a format where over triggers do exist is really helpful for Keter Sanctuary in general. The only thing I think I will mention is that it seems that there aren't really a lot of grade threes going to be focused around in this deck. You know, even if you do get the over trigger, giving your rear guards an extra drive check doesn't really mean a lot. So it's not completely certain if the over trigger will make that big of a difference in this deck. Moving on to the rest of the new cards, we're going to go ahead and talk about Marin. Little Sage Marin is back and it's part of the ride line. Its first skill is auto when it's rode upon by a grade two with blaster in its name. You look at the top seven cards of your deck, choose up to one grade two with blaster in its name and you reveal it and put it in your hand. If you did not reveal a card, you can choose a wingle braid from your soul and you may call it the rear guard circle. What I really like about Marin's skill is that it works both with blaster blade and blaster dark in the ride line. Blaster dark skill is that when it's placed, you can counter blast one, retire a rear guard, and then you can retire one of your opponent's rear guards and give your vanguard for give this unit an extra drive check, meaning that when Blaster Dark attacks on the Vanguard Circle, it gets a twin drive, increasing the amount of triggers you can apply to it when you're running eight crit. So what I like about this is that if you do ride the Blaster Dark and you try to search the top seven and you don't find a grade two blaster, you can still use its skill to counter blast, retire the Wingo Bray that you called to the rear guard circle and still get that extra drive check. Obviously the goal seems to be that you wanna ride Blaster Blade, but we'll go ahead and talk about Blaster Blade skill. We've already known Blaster Blade's skill from previous streams when they first announced the 10th anniversary cards coming in DBT05. So let's go ahead and go over Blaster Blade again since it was part of the stream. Blaster Blade's first skill is when it's placed on the Vanguard Circle, you counter Blast 1, choose one of your opponent's regards, retire it. If you did not retire, you draw a card. So more resources if your opponent's not really calling anything. Second skill is when it's placed on Rear, counter Blast 1, Choose one of your opponent's grade two or greater rear guards, retire it. Classic Blaster Blade, retiring skills, nothing's really changed there. The last new card is just what's the new starter, which is Wingle Brave. When it's rode upon, if you went second, you draw a card. I feel like the only real reason that they announced this card is just because that it's included in Marin's skill, but it seems to be that it's just a regular starter, but you know, it's a name specific starter that works with Marin. So along with the rest of the Royal Paladin support, we actually got a new order card, which is Bravery to Stand Against, Will to Pierce Through, which is a really cool name for an order card to begin with. You play this card with Counter Blast 1 if you have a Vanguard Blaster in its name. You search your deck for the one grade two card with Blaster, reveal it, put it in your hand, shuffle your deck. So it's a very simple card to help you get whatever grade two you need. So you can kind of think of this card as running extra copies of your grade two blasters. The only problem is that if you do decide to run blaster javelin in your ride line for whatever reason, you have run the risk of calling this card an accident. But other than that, it's just more of a consistency piece and it can help a lot. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and talk about the new Brant Gate stuff, which is one who craves knowledge, Ava. So the rest of this whole line is revolving around the unit known as Ava and a bunch of sciency stuff. So the starter, one, who's wrote, one who craves knowledge, Ava, is when one who is wrote upon, if you went second, you draw a card. So it's standard grade zero card, going onto the grade one, an afternoon nap, regardless of place, Ava. She really do be sleeping though. 
When this unit is placed by writing from the grade zero, you search your deck for a research card, reveal it and put it into your hand and shuffle your deck. Research card is another way for a fancy order that's specific to Ava, but we'll go into that a little bit later. The grade two for Ava is when this unit is placed from writing an afternoon nap regardless of place Ava, search your deck for up to one research card, reveal it, put it in your hand, shuffle your deck. So a lot more of the research card searching. So next we're gonna go on to the grade three, which is Fountain of Knowledge, Ava. Act, Counterblast one, look at cards from the top of your deck equal to the number of research cards put into your order zone. Choose up to one card from among them and put it in your hand and put the rest on the bottom of your deck. This gets an extra 5k until the end of the turn. When this unit attacks, you can blast one, soul blast one. Search your deck or hand for up to one card with Obscudide, I don't even know if I'm saying that right, in its name and call it to Rearguard Circle. If you search through your deck, you shuffle your deck. So now I'm going to quickly talk about the new type of order card, which is the one that we got revealed, which is Experiment Successful. Grade 2 order. Auto, when this is put into the order zone, you draw a card, choose a card from your hand, and discard it. If your order zone has three or more research cards, use Soul Blast 1, choose one of your opponent's rear guards, and you bind it. So it seems like the goal of the research cards is just to make it easier for Ava to look through the deck, find cards to kind of filter through your deck, and then just place them. And since the grade 1 and grade 2 make it easier to acquire research cards, it seems like the deck will just kind of make do with just the first two orders, and then after that it's really about kind of filtering and searching them out to help go through your deck. We're going to talk about the card that was mentioned in the grade 3 of his skill, which is Knight of Blackness Obscured. It's a grade 3 with a skill that's when it attacks, if your order zone has a set order, this unit gets 5k until the end of battle, and if it has 3 or more set orders, this unit gets 10k instead of 5k. I can already see this card being really, really good with Orphist, surprisingly, just because of the fact that you keep on setting orders just to get to Dark Knight and Abyssal Dark Knight, so there's that as well. So I feel like this is a really good aggressive card for Orphist, but obviously it's more catered to Ava since you're putting multiple research cards into your set order zone. The glitter effect with Ava is that when this unit is placed on the rearguard circle by a card ability, if your order zone is three or more research cards, this gets an extra critical. On top of that, a unit has a continuous ability, which is that it has intercept and it gets an extra 10k shield when it's placed on the guardian circle. This looks like an amazing card. Just the fact that it is an intercept and has 10k shield is a Keter Sanctuary card that you can run in a Bastion deck. That's going to be interesting to see as a tech as well, but besides the shield, I really don't think that it's going to do anything else for any Keter Sanctuary focused decks to begin with. But besides that, this looks like an amazing Orphis card, and it's obviously already great with Ava. So that's pretty much it for my first thoughts looking at these cards. I can already see the MLB deck being kind of just like a very casual, uh, consistent deck that's just focused on searching out and filtering, and also just giving your Vanguard an extra drive, but it's mostly going to be defensive as well, considering it's a 15k base for the whole game, and being at that defensive number is going to make it a lot easier to protect yourself. Ava as a filtration card looks really, really fun. My only concern is that we only have one research card listed in this reveal. Hopefully we'll be seeing more once the main set is released. For now, with the one research order, it doesn't seem like the deck will be thriving that well, but hopefully we see more research orders in the future. I can see Ava being a really strong filter deck as well. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you guys think of these new Brantgate and Keter Sanctuary cards in the comment section below. And until next time, I'm Richard and I'll see you on the next one.